Okay. All right. We are live. Hello, hello. All right. So I'm going to give it just a second for people to come. Then we can hang out. All right. So what we are going to be talking about today is processing feelings. So again, in the next video, in the next live, I'm going to talk more the big picture, what I kind of think we can uh, take from this at, in an empowering view and maybe um, what, I, what I am seeing as the kind of broader picture for all of this. Um, but in this video, we're going to be talking about processing feelings and why this is so important. All right. So there are a lot of spiritual traditions that teach us that we are meant to learn to kind of ride the waves of our thoughts and feelings and not react and learn how to be equanimous, equanimous with our thoughts and our feelings. And I never fully resonated with that overarching concept that we're here to just learn how to not react to our own self. Um, However, there is absolute benefit in learning how to mature in our senses of our feelings and our emotions and our thoughts and what's really going on in order to move from an empowered place. So we can kind of think of this again as this is not black and white. And as much as we in the world love just tell me what the answer is, right? Am I supposed to ignore my feelings? Am I supposed to transcend them? Am I supposed to get rid of my thoughts? Am I supposed to be able to just watch my thoughts go across my, my perception like a cloud and then watch it go away? Or do my feelings and thoughts have messages for me? Is there not some purpose in them? Is there not something I can do in this world? And it's kind of like the same idea of, Am I completely in control of my reality? Am I manifesting everything and it's all because of me? Or am I a victim to circumstance and we're just a collective or it's the universe acting the way that it's acting? Which is the right answer? And I think what we all have to kind of come to is that real reality is complex. And the reason that we have both of these schools of thought in everything is because there's elements of truth in both schools of thought. That it's not that either one is right or wrong. It's that they both have a piece of the puzzle for us. So learning how to sit with and be with your emotions and not react to them has utility. But it's not so that you can ultimately learn how to never take action based on what you're feeling. Because, as we've been talking so much in all these other videos, that your feelings are there to guide your action. You are a human who is here to live a life and to have an effect and to discover how reality works, to discover yourself and to express yourself. And that requires action and that requires new and different action as we continue on down our paths. And we have to understand that a lot of the time the intellect is not, doesn't have access to new information. What we already have experienced and processed and know and understand is in the past, right? That's what we've already been through. That's who we've already become. That's what we've already experienced. And in order to continue to grow, in order to continue to become something new, we need to be continually interacting with the unknown. We need to be taking in new information, new experiences that then challenge us out of what we have already been into expanding something new. And this is why I say desire is never a bad thing. Desire 
is the spark of life itself. Without desire, we would not do anything. We could not express. We could not discover ourselves. We could not be on this path of awakening if there was no desire. It's more the desire bringing suffering when we have a very specific way we think life has to go before we can be happy that causes suffering, right? So it's not, again, in this school of thought, it's not to say desire is bad and we need to get rid of all desire and that is what will make us happy. That's a far oversimplification. It's we need to understand what desire actually is and what it's drawing us to and where true happiness actually comes from, which is this embracing of the journey, that we're never going to get it done, we're never going to be complete, we're never gonna have everything. And learning how to find happiness within the circumstances we can't control, and learning how to take control and change for the better the circumstances we do have control over. So again, it, are we meant to just think that we are manifesting everything and everything is our creation or is it no free will everything's just happening to us it's neither because it's both there are things we have control over that we are here to change and evolve into and improve and then there are some things that are not in our control that we need to learn how to find the life generating path within so it's not simple and it is that way with the emotions it is that way with feeling. We are not meant to be chickens with our heads cut off, running around, acting on every impulse. Because that's an unexamined life. And generally, a lot of the time, we don't actually know what our feelings and our emotions are actually telling us. We think we know. We think we have a clear understanding of reality. We think we have a clear understanding of ourselves and that we are making clear concise, meaningful decisions. But if our lives are not becoming more ordered, if our lives are not becoming more creative, if we're not discovering new things, but we're just looping in the same patterns of behavior, feeling equals this reaction, feeling equals this reaction, feeling equals this reaction. And, and we'll get into this deeper as we go along, but we're, we're looping in the same experience over and over and over again. That's our sign that we don't actually know what our feelings are telling us. So we do want to then stop acting, stop reacting, process for a bit, get some new information, and then act from the new, newly informed, newly empowered place. So we need to understand that feelings are an intelligence. Feelings are information. Feelings are an intelligence. Feelings are information. One more time. Feelings are an intelligence. Feelings are information. Because we are a culture that is addicted to this idea that the only thing that is information is something we can think, something we can tangibly explain. That it's cognitive is the only form of information that's information that counts. And we kind of have to expand our view that logic based information linear based information information that we are thinking with words in our head is only one kind of information that's only one kind one way to perceive and understand ourselves in the universe feeling like the actual process and sensation involved in feeling something when your body is having an experience of tingling of contraction of rushing of of repulsion of attraction right when we feel pulled away when we feel pulled towards when we feel expansive when we feel contractive when we feel open when we feel closed when we feel like something is heavy when we feel like something is light, this is an intelligence. This is information, okay? So empaths have had this forever. Sensitive people, spiritual people have known this about themselves forever, that 
what you're experiencing goes far beyond that which is just obvious, right? It goes beyond what we can see. So what we're looking at, it goes beyond what we can hear. It goes beyond what logically appears to be happening. So this is another big thing with our perception of reality and how reality actually is. We have to understand that our minds, oops, sorry, that our minds are designed to create a reality that doesn't exist. They evolved this way to tell stories. So we can use that as a tool for evolution in that because of our storytelling capacity, we can create things that have never existed before. This is a beautiful, amazing, extremely unique to the human experience and our level of consciousness that humanity is at right now, element of humanity, which is the capacity to tell stories, the capacity to invent a reality that has not yet been made manifest in, in reality, in 3D reality. We can conceptualize a book that has never been written and we can write that book right we can create something because we imagined it um so our capacity to invent realities that don't exist is not a bad thing it's the thing that makes us what we are conscious creators at the same time we have to understand because of this we can create stories about reality that aren't true to how reality actually functions, to how we actually function. And in that, we can get ourselves in trouble, right? Where we are thinking, I understand why I'm in pain and this is what I need to do about it. When perhaps that's not at all what's happening and that's not at all what we need to do about it. So like I say, there can be things in life. There are often things in life. And if you're an empath or a spiritual person or a sensitive person, you have had this experience a hundred million times in your life. Everything looks fine. You're having a conversation with someone. You're in someone's house. You're, you're interacting with someone. You're watching a TV show. It's just normal. It's just fine. Nothing is apparently going on. But you feel uncomfortable. You feel contractive. You feel resistant. You feel repulsed. Or something can seem totally normal, just whatever's going on, and you're drawn in. It feels so good to you. There's a lightness. There's an expansion. You're picking up on information that goes beyond the obvious what we can see, hear, feel, and touch. Feeling is information. So two people could be having a conversation, but you're feeling a subtle manipulation. You're feeling this person wants something from you. You're feeling this person has resentment and an expectation of you that they're not communicating. So like I say, everything looks fine on the surface, but you're feeling off. And so a lot of us empaths and, and sensitive people have been told our whole lives, that feeling is something wrong with you because the outside world is fine. Everything's fine. That person isn't saying anything weird. That person isn't doing that. They're not hitting you. They're not cussing you out. They're not, th this is a normal situation, right? So, and again, we've talked a lot about this. This is normal. We're all just sitting around watching TV, eating junk food. What, what could possibly be wrong with this? And you feel terrible. You feel depressed. You feel anxious. You have these emotions that are clusters of feeling that are telling you this is a death path. This is out of alignment. This doesn't feel good to me because it isn't good for me. And most of us, like I say, have been shamed and blamed and unwittingly or wittingly gaslit in our feelings, in our emotional perception 
for our entire lives. So now things are confused, right? We're not just having a, oh, I feel, I feel um, repulsed by this. So I'm going to honor that feeling. I'm going to investigate it. I'm going to see what it's trying to tell me. And I'm going to, I'm going to get that information. And then I'm just going to be on my merry way, right? It's gotten so confused and so messed up <laughs> for lack of a better word through the indoctrination through the misunderstanding really the misunderstanding because like i don't really believe that any human as e evil as they might look or narcissistic or whatever label we want to put on them is actually trying to hurt someone else it's all coming from we just so deeply don't understand this we don't understand what you're going through. We don't understand why we are in pain. We don't understand why we're feeling what we're feeling. And I have shame and I have guilt around this, or I only know how to blame. I only know how to project because that's how I kept myself safe. And our caregivers passed these things on to us that were passed on to them, that what they were feeling was invalidated. What they were feeling turned into their parents blaming and shaming them. So we've all had the experience of being told that we're making things awful because we can't just go along with things. That if we could just be fine, if it wasn't for our anxiety, if it wasn't for our depression, if it wasn't for our sadness, if it wasn't for our, our whatever it is, everything would be fine. It's us that's broken. And we need to treat our depression and we need to treat our anxiety and we need to do something about our constant sadness and our moping around and our not being able to handle that which is normal. And so much of that is because, again, if we were to look at the people who are emotionally reacting to everything that seems fine, that would blow the lid off that we have this life figured out and everything's fine. And then what? Then we're all confused. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. We don't know why what is hurting is hurting. We don't know really what's happening. And so if we're to acknowledge the feeling, which is that first base of information in alignment with truth, out of alignment with truth, right? We have to understand this, that so much of what we are feeling, we don't intellectually understand yet. The feeling-based intelligence is the intelligence of, I don't need to understand why this or that is out of alignment. I don't have to have an awareness of how the structure works before I know what feels good and what feels bad. Because if that were true, right, if we needed to understand everything before we could live in alignment with how reality works, we would all be dead. Because none of us come in understanding everything. And in order to be constantly learning, we have to be continually interacting with a reality that we don't understand that we don't get yet, that we don't know about. Desire is pulling us forward to new experiences, to expand into something we've never been before. So we can't know ahead of time what is going to be life generating and what is gonna be life degrading. We can, we can get an understanding of how the universe works enough that we can make predictions. And we can get in touch with our feelings enough that we don't even have to start to pursue something before we are gonna know that's a life generating path, that's a death generating path. And also just, again, to make this a little bit more complicated, breaking ourselves against reality, breaking the laws of nature, breaking the laws of the universe is not always a death generating path. Pain, when we are, when we are going against how things work, when we are failing, when we're making mistakes, there are many, many times where that's completely in alignment with our growth path. So there's a part of it that feels good and a part of it that hurts because we needed to have that breaking ourselves against reality, um, bumping up against the limits of reality, what we didn't know already, experience in order to understand what we needed to understand to grow into what we want to grow into. So just because we take a job and it felt so exciting and like exactly on path, and this is exactly what we wanted to do. And then we end up with this really crazy boss and these crazy circumstances that happen. And we think, oh my gosh, my intuition totally led me in the wrong direction. It felt good 
to do to get this job and then this job was really painful what the heck and it's like well no you needed to go through that experience it's, it's what your soul wanted to do to learn what it needed to learn about yourself and about reality through this challenging experience that you'll then come away being like okay i know something about myself now more i know something about how i want to interact i know something more about how i want to live i know something more about how i want to work i know something more about the things that really actually light me up and the things that don't because i had that challenging experience so this is why feeling is so complex because it's we're we're feeling all at once the universal truth so the pain and pleasure that comes with this is just how the universe works and it's all the same for all of us as well as feeling our relative truth what is right for us right now what is wrong for us right now so this can be another thing where we had a complete aversion to something that felt great to somebody else and then we start to say well which one of us was right who is more spiritual who's on the life generating path and who isn't both if it feels bad for you don't do it if it feels good for them do it and you're both on the path you're both doing what you should be doing your relative reality is based on what you are here to express and like i said there's that overarching universal reality but the relative reality is different for all of us so it's true that we all share one reality and it's true that we all have our own little reality. So this is why processing our feelings before we act on them, circling it back to not everything is what it seems, right? What we are feeling is always more information than we intellectually have about whatever we're facing. So I'm gonna say that again, what we're feeling is always the next level of information about whatever we're going through that we don't yet have a cognitive understanding of. Because when we have a cognitive understanding of it, when we really have gone all the way through it, we've processed it, we've experienced what we've experienced, we've processed it, now it's an intellectual understanding, we can say, I don't put my hand on the burner because the burner is hot and the burner destroys my tissues. And that hurts because it's against life generation. It's death, right? It's not superstition. There's no, I just feel intuitively that I shouldn't put my hand on the burner. You understand why you shouldn't put your hand on the burner because of the experience you had, right? When it's just a feeling, when it's, I recoil from that. When I put my hand near it, I, I pull back. I don't, I don't understand yet why. I don't, under, I don't know. The mechanism of heat i don't understand how it's going to destroy my cells i don't have any idea about that yet the feeling is that initial spark that there's something to learn here so that's what we want to look at our emotions and feelings like they are the initial spark that there's something to learn here that will eventually be processed into intellectual understanding that then empowers us to take empowered choices in our lives and like I said when you get really good at this you get to the point where people think you're magic meaning you will be able to say if we go down that path this is what's going to happen this is how it's going to happen and so I'm not going to do that and people are going to be like what the fuck are you psychic and you're going to be like no because is it psychic if I say if I put my hand on a burner it's going to I'm going to get a burn, it's going to damage my tissue, and then I'm going to have to run it under cold water, put gauze on it, put ointment on it, and all that healing process that's going to take place. Is that being psychic? No. You just have enough experience with how reality works that you can predict the outcome of your actions because there's a structure to how reality functions. When you start to get really good at being in your feelings, you will be the kind of person who has experienced enough of life that to you is just obvious because it's intellectually processed to an understanding of this is how this works. Where everyone else is still lost in logic, what they already know, the loops of their behavior, and therefore don't have new information, not listening to their feelings, probably 
trying to not listen to their feelings. So then therefore they are stuck at the intellectual level that they're at. So feelings are always leading us to the next thing we're gonna intellectually understand. We're gonna have an awareness of how it works. It's not gonna be just an intuitive sense. It's gonna lead to a logical understanding, a higher awareness of reality itself, which then leads to more empowered action choices. So the more of aware of reality we become, the more aware of reality we become, the more aware of ourselves we become, the more creative control we have within it, right? The more we understand the law of physics, the more we can create an airplane. The less we understand the laws of physics, we can't fly. So all of this works together. The more we understand about ourselves, the more we understand about reality, the more creative control we have. So when we ask ourselves, are humans conscious creators? Depends on how conscious you are. And what is conscious? Depends on how much you understand how the reality works and can make, therefore, choices that are in alignment with how reality functions to create within the structure that exists. Right? So, so many of us have these ideas of what we want to create in life and we keep going and keep trying and it doesn't work and it doesn't work and it doesn't work and it doesn't work because we have an idea of this is how it's going to happen. This is how I'm going to build the house. I'm going to build the house from the roof down. So we keep trying to build this house from the roof down and it keeps failing because that's not how reality works. We have to build from the ground up. So as long as we're continuing to tell ourselves this story, it makes perfect logic sense. I sh I'll build the roof and then I'll slip the thing under it and then I'll slip the thing under that. and then It doesn't matter how much the logic can come up with the story for how it's going to work. If it's painful, if it's hard, if it's constantly failing, we need to understand we're wrong. That feeling of pain that we keep experiencing as we continue to try to go after our desire is telling us that the story we think for how we're going to get our desires met is incorrect. We don't understand reality yet. We need to sit with our feelings. We need to observe reality. So this is part of the practice of processing our feelings is learning because eventually we get to my feelings are telling me I need to observe reality more. I need to open my awareness to more of reality. That's always what our feelings are telling us because that's where the information is. The information is in reality. So again, when people ask me, who was your teacher? What book did you read? How did you learn all this stuff? And I say, I learned it from reality. People don't like that answer. Because we're not into observing. We're not really excited about what if my story is wrong? And what if I drop my story and just observe the facts that contradict my story, that don't align with my story and how I think reality is? And take those facts in as being something that's happening. So therefore, my version of reality needs to get upgraded if I really want to understand this, right? When we're like, which diet is healthier, veganism or meat eating? Well, we have people having success on both. So on both sides, when the vegans say it's impossible to be healthy eating meat, that's not reality. That doesn't fit into what we want to believe, into the worldview and all the logic and everything we've come up with to, to say. This is how it is. But then if there are results in reality that contradict that, we need to say, I'm wrong. Does this mean veganism isn't optimal? That we can't be optimally healthy eating a vegan diet? Of course not. It's, we need to get in that if this is how reality is unfolding, reality is not getting it wrong. So the first step in our learning how to process our feelings journey is self passion okay and we're gonna loop it back to this over and over and over again because all of us like I said in the last video when we were talking about pain 
most of us, all of us who don't know how to process our emotions yet, when we feel something, we go into, I'm going to fix myself. There's something wrong with me. I'm going to blame and project. There's something wrong out there that needs to change and they need to change it. Or I'm a victim. There's nothing I can do. These three ways of reacting to our feelings, which is pain is one of them, but most of us react to our anxiety this way, our depression, our unknown, our fear, our discomfort in any way. Some of us even react to our joy and our pleasure and our curiosity and our seeking, the things we're attracted to in this way, because we've been so indoctrinated that what we want is wrong, right? We got shamed for the things that interested us. We got, we got rejected for the things that called to us. We were told that's wrong, that's bad, don't go that way. You can't be that, you can't have that, you can't want that. So when we're feeling good, we go into shame, we go into blame, we go into guilt. Or when we're feeling repulsed by something, pulled away by something, anxiety, depression, we think, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me that I'm feeling this emotion? What's wrong with me that I'm depressed? What's wrong with me that I'm anxious? There's something wrong with me. Or the world needs to change. I can't be happy the way that it is and there's nothing I can do about it, but it's, it's them, it's them, it's them, it's them. If they just accepted me, I wouldn't hate myself so much. If they just loved me perfectly, I would be able to be my real self. If they could just, if I could just find the perfect relationship, if I could just find the perfect job, if I could just get this body the way that it needs to be, all of this pain would go away, right? This is where most of us are reacting from. When we feel a feeling, we go into our coping mechanisms, we go into our self-sabotage, and we go into our scapegoating. Thinking, right, we're telling ourselves, I have already completely understood why I'm thinking and feeling what I'm feeling, and this reaction that I'm having is completely in alignment with reality. We all think we're seeing ourselves clearly, we're interpreting our feelings properly and clearly, and that the actions that we're taking are the right answer. I do need to feel bad about myself right now. I do need to shame myself. This is completely logical. I need to diet. That makes perfect sense. I'm on, I'm on, I'm feeling this in my body. I need to fast, obviously. I need a new boyfriend, clearly. I have to break up with this one, obviously. I gotta go yell at my kids. I gotta go watch TV. I, or I need to fix myself that I watch so much TV. I need to fix myself that I drink so much. I need to fix myself that I eat. I need to quit this job. I need to start this new job, start this project. Go to, blah, blah, blah. We don't actually know. Because all of those actions, again, when it's coming from self-improvement, I gotta fix this broken thing about me. Or when it's coming from, if I just change enough, the external world will give me what I need. Or when it's coming from, they need to change. Some external thing needs to take place before I can understand and get out of this pain. We are acting from our childlike, innocent trauma where we never learned how to process, we never learned how to process our feelings. We only learned how to guilt ourselves or project or go into victim mentality we only know how to change ourselves so that someone will fix this pain for us how to try and manipulate someone else so they will fix the pain for us or just resign ourselves that we're in this okay that is the child response the adult response is I'm gonna validate that I'm feeling something so that's already being your own parent, right? We're finally being the parents all of us never had. I am feeling something and it's legit. Even if there's no obvious reason why I'm feeling this way, everything is normal, everything is fine. I'm normal, everything. And then on the other side, if we're feeling fear, if we're feeling freaking out, if, if we're responding to something like in our bodies or in our relationships or the drama of life. And you're like, I have every reason to be acting the way that I'm acting, to do what I'm going to do, to go on the diet, to break up with the person, to fight, to, 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 to act as soon as I feel the thing. 
that those are our two kind of strategies right now, right? Either I'm going to invalidate my feeling by making it that I'm crazy or it's not real or it doesn't exist or I have every reason to act exactly how I'm acting. We want to look at both of these things and say, okay, we validate that. I validate that, of course, I think I need to go on the diet. I need to quit the job. I need to have the fight. I need to change myself and my behavior so this person will like me. It's clear that I'm suffering because they are disapproving of me. They are disappointed in me. They don't like what I'm doing. This isn't good enough. It's very clear that I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. Whenever we are in a story about how our feelings are telling us that we're sh we should be ashamed of ourselves, we're in a story. We're not feeling our feelings and we don't actually know what the feeling is telling us. It's going to be so obvious to you and then it's going to feel like this is so obvious. Of course I should feel bad about myself. I made this person upset. I have to hate myself. I have to take pleasure away from me now. Of course I should change the way that I'm eating. My stomach hurts. Of course I need to fast. Of course I need to whatever. This is obvious. Of course I need medication. Of course there's something wrong with me. I shouldn't be feeling so much anxiety and depression. Everything's normal. We need to validate that we have these reactions and then we need to validate that these reactions have gotten us into loops of behavior where nothing ever changes. We've taken the action of beating up ourselves, invalidating ourselves, telling ourselves the feeling doesn't exist and it's not real and we need to just fix ourselves so that we can be fine in whatever we're in and we never get there. This feeling always comes back. We always feel this way over and over and over again. We've never been able to improve ourselves or change ourselves or tap or journal enough or process it enough that we can feel okay in this. We need to validate that. Second thing we need to validate is that what I am thinking, the solution is here. This self improvement, this changing this thing that I think I have control over, which is again, super innocent. We, do, we go to our coping mechanisms and we sabotage ourselves to give ourselves something we feel is tangible for us to fix, right? Because if you're drinking, you can then make a plan for how you're getting off drinking. And then you feel in control of your pain. Instead of, if I really get off the drinking, all the pain is there. The reason I'm drinking is to try to get away from this pain that I don't know what to do with, right? So the, the first step is that validation that I'm doing this. The second step is realizing that it, it's getting us in loops. Everything we think we're doing to solve our problem isn't working. We're ending up in the same place over and over and over again. We go on the diet, we fall off the diet. We start the self-improvement, we fall off the self-improvement. We're in the relationship, we're out of the relationship. We're in the job, we're out of the job. We save the money, we spend the money. We're reacting, reacting, reacting. It's seemingly working for a short period of time. And then we end up exactly in the same place. So there, that second thing is to validate that without turning that into shame, without turning that into blame, without turning that into I'm doing something wrong. And this is a new thing to beat myself up for. It's innocent. We are doing what we're doing because we genuinely believe it's the answer. We genuinely think it's going to get us out of pain. No one is doing anything that they're doing to themselves for any other reason than they think it's what's required to get out of pain or to get pleasure. That's it. That's the bottom line. Every narcissist is doing what they think they need to do to get their needs met. They don't know any other way. They are so trapped in shame and in guilt and in I'm not worthy and no one's ever going to love me and no one's ever going to actually give me what I need through a genuine way. I have to manipulate. I'm not good enough. I'm fundamentally messed up. And if I were to look at that, that's too overwhelming too shameful, I have to project. The codependents who are always on the self-improvement journey, who are always struggling, who are always trying this new spiritual technique and this new path and this new thing and that new thing and constantly trying to improve ourselves. 
again, is what we think we need to do to get out of pain. We think there's something fundamentally wrong with me. It must just be me. And if I can just fix myself enough one day, I'm going to be happy. We all are doing it from a very innocent place. We want to have pleasure and we don't want to have pain. And this is what we think it's going to take. And we need to accept that it isn't working. That it's not taking us where we want to go. So this is phase one and phase two of processing our emotions. Validating that we're feeling something. And then validating that everything that we've done up until this point to fix it hasn't worked. It's worked to a degree. It's given us moments of bliss, moments of escape, moments of feeling in control, moments of thinking we're doing what we should be doing, moments of looking like we're fixing ourselves, but then we fall back. It always goes back. So we validate that. Third step is we don't shame ourselves for this. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you don't understand your pain. It's not your fault that you think you know what you should be doing about it and that that isn't true. It's not your fault that you have stories on top of reality that are not true to reality. We all have that. We were all taught stories about reality that are not true to reality. None of us chose this. We were all indoctrinated into a system where everyone doesn't know. Because remember, the best lie, the best lie, the most believable lie, is the lie that the person that's telling you the lie believes themselves. Okay? The world has taught you what it's taught you. The world is so out of alignment and totally in the dark and corrupted and blah, 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 blah. Because everyone believes this is reality. We are convinced that this is what reality is. We are convinced that we are seeing things clearly and that we are responding appropriately. The billionaires who hoard their billions and billions of dollars aren't aware that unity consciousness is a thing. They aren't aware that there could be safety for them in sharing. They aren't aware that if they had a little bit less stuff and more people had more, that it wouldn't just be anarchy and that everything would get taken over and their lives would be at risk. They don't know that. They are literally acting from, if I don't have this, I'm not going to be okay. That's always where it's going to come from. I need this power. I need this control. I need this much money because I am so afraid that if I don't have this, that something terrible is going to happen. If we get down to it with every single human being, everyone is believing their own story. And it's because they have experience that validated that story. So this is another thing. As we learn to process, we're going to start to see that the way we have interpreted the facts of life and the facts of life might be two different things. So for instance, in my life, I was constantly rejected for my sensitivity. Constantly rejected for my sensitivity. My caregivers rejected me. My friends rejected me. My teachers rejected me. It always came down to I made someone uncomfortable and that was weird and wrong and bad. So I could take from that, my sensitivity is bad. Because look at the facts. Look at the facts of reality. Everyone responds this way. This has been my experience. You can't tell me everyone was loving me and I was just making it up that people were rejecting me. People were rejecting me. That's a fact. But does that mean there's something wrong with me? Does that mean my sensitivity is bad? No. That was a story that was invented on top of reality. So you see how this is can get complicated, right? Because if someone said to me, your sensitivity is good and your perception of reality that it's bad is a false perception. I'd be like, okay, but look at all this evidence. Everyone rejected me. It was so painful to be sensitive. It sucked. It was the worst thing ever. It made everyone hate me. It made everyone uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. Facts. And they were like, if they were to tell me that that's not fact, they would be ignoring reality. But that doesn't mean that what I made 
the unfolding of reality mean was correct. Because in real reality, my sensitivity isn't good or bad. It's a tool. In real reality, as I learn to understand my sensitivity and that this is just a way that I am and I'm never going to not be this, and I embrace it, I learn how to be a sensitive person in this world. I learned how to validate myself. I learned how to be on my own side. I learned how to stop being codependent and childlike in my, am I doing everything right? Am I getting approval? Which is a trap. It liberated me. Because people rejected me so much, it forced me to learn how to embrace myself. And then when I'm embracing myself, it doesn't matter who's rejecting me. I can be okay. When I can't embrace myself, 100 people accept me, one person rejects me, it's over. I'm not free. I'm not liberated. So part of my sensitivity was something that literally led to my liberation. It liberated me from I need to live this life that everyone's going to approve of of me to, okay, I can do things and be disapproved of and I can learn to be okay. And then that led me to be able to do so many different things with my life that lots of people disapprove of. I got rejected for a lot of the choices that I made that were absolutely necessary for me, for my life. And if I had sacrificed what I knew was right for me, for consensus reality approval, because I had never learned how to approve of myself because I had been so rejected, I wouldn't be here. I would probably be dead. So you see, it's interpretation of reality that we often think is reality. So that is the fourth step is we learn to sit with our feelings and question the stories that are arising when we feel what we feel. Because all of us have stories attached to our feelings. We all feel something and immediately say, this is, right, we label it. This is anxiety, this is depression, this is loneliness, this is fear. This is why it's happening and this is what I need to do about it. And it's so fast that most of us don't even recognize that we're doing it. Because again, it's so obvious to us. So learning how to say, okay, I'm going to feel this. And I'm going to question, what am I making this feeling mean? What am I telling myself about this? What are the experiences I'm drawing on that I'm saying, this is reality and this is how it is. This validates my story. And then how does that story feel? How do my stories feel? And if they feel heavy, if they feel contracting, if they feel like it takes like you're blaming someone else or like you're blaming and shaming yourself. It's not true. And like I said, we're going to have all these facts to support it. We didn't come up with these stories for no reason. Doesn't mean your story is true. If it hurts, it's not true. If it's not empowering, it's not true. If it's not teaching you something more about how reality works so you can adjust your way of being to a higher way of being in alignment with reality, not always in alignment with humanity, okay? We have to really, really understand this. Oftentimes, what we're going to discover about our stories and the things we're doing and what is really, truly right for us is going to be stuff that doesn't feel good to the part of us that wants consensus reality approval. So again, this is another part of, does this feel good because I think it's going to get me accepted and approved of? Does this feel bad because it's getting me rejected by humans? Or does this feel good because this is something genuinely inside of me that feels right? Does this feel bad because it's something genuinely inside of me that feels wrong? This is where most of us can't ever understand our emotions or our feelings because we've, we've never learned to differentiate consensus reality, pain and pleasure. I feel good about this because it's going to get me approved of. I feel bad about this because it's going to get me rejected. 
and true pain and pleasure. This feels right to me. This feels wrong to me. So we can ask ourselves that question. Does this feel good because I think it's going to get me approval? Does this feel bad because I think it's going to get me rejected? And if that's my reasoning, that's my inner child calling for love. Can I love myself even if I get rejected? Can I love myself even if other people don't love me? Can I start to stand on my own two feet and go for a life on my own that other people don't understand or won't understand or can't understand? Can I start to be on my own side? So again, I want to start from the beginning. We validate that we're feeling something. We're not crazy. We're not making it up. We validate what we would usually make this feeling mean and everything we would do about it. We validate our patterns of behavior and that we really think we understand what it's going to take to fix our problem. We understand that this is what I always think when I feel this way. This is what I always do when I feel this way. And it's a loop over and over. It feels good in the moment, but then I end up back here. And then it's good in the moment, and then I end up back here. I'm not making progress in my life. I don't actually know why this feeling is occurring. Because if I keep doing the same things, and it makes me feel better for a moment, but then the feeling comes back, I didn't deal with it. I don't know why it's happening. I placated myself. So then we go to step three, where we love ourselves in our placation. We love ourselves, and this is all I know to do right now. I was trained that this is what this feeling means, and this is what I have to do about it. It's what everyone else does. It's what I had to do as a child to survive my household. It's how I coped with a world I didn't understand. Then we start to go in, and we start to feel, and we question these stories. What am I telling myself this feeling means? What am I telling myself I should be doing about it? What am I telling myself is the cause? And what am I telling myself is the solution? Or that I'm telling myself I don't have a solution. Or I don't understand. And I will never understand. And I could never understand. And if this thing that I have right now is the solution isn't it, then I'm fucked. We all have that. If it's not what I already think it is, if I let go of that, then I have nothing. We validate that. Okay? Fourth thing. We validate and investigate. Does what I'm feeling feel the way that it's feeling because of consensus reality, pain, and pleasure, or true pain and pleasure? We investigate our stories. We investigate our version of reality, the stories we're telling ourselves about what happened to us and what it means. What am I making this mean? What am I making this mean? What am I making this mean? Is it really true? If it hurts, there's more information. And then that's the complex thing of if it hurts, that doesn't necessarily mean its opposite is true. Right? Everyone rejected me for my sensitivity, and that feels terrible. So that means that everyone loves me in my sensitivity. That's not true either. The real story is that my sensitivity is a tool that I can use for my good, or I can use to destroy myself. It's not good or bad. It absolutely, some people reject it, some people accept it. But that can't be how I live my life based on whether I'm being accepted or rejected. I chose, I'm gonna embrace my sensitivity. I'm gonna learn to work with it. There are gonna be people who accept me. There are gonna be people who don't accept me. And I need to learn to accept myself. That was reality. Totally different then I'm oversensitive, I made someone uncomfortable, I need to make myself smaller, right? So my thing, one of my things in the past used to be, I would feel that I'm making someone uncomfortable, I would go into shame immediately. You suck, you shouldn't have done that, you made someone uncomfortable, you're terrible, you're awful. And then it would be, my coping mechanism would be, how do I please them? How do I go into people pleasing? And this is so obvious. Just I'm feeling this way and now I'm worried about what should I say to them? What should I do to them? What, should, what can I give to them? What, how can I navigate this relationship? And it was so obvious to me that all that people pleasing and codependency was just obviously the answer. I'm shitty. I feel this way. And this is what I'm supposed to do about it. 
as I investigated and as I did these processes that I'm telling you about, it eventually got to, okay, I have the sensitivity. Maybe I don't need to share this thing with this person. Maybe I need to learn how to be invited in before I share my insight. Maybe I have a wound in here that's telling me that I'm responsible for everybody. And if I don't share my insight right here, right now, they're lost and perishing forever. The universe is depending on me. And if I don't do this right now, I failed my mission. Whoa, that feels terrible. I'm living like this crazy person who's, who's responsible for everybody. That hurts. And then it's making this sensitivity that I have extra reinforcing that it's bad because I'm projecting it onto all these people who don't want it and didn't ask for it. And then I'm getting rejected and then I'm hating myself and all this, you see? So this is why what I say, eventually we get to a place where we sit with our emotions long enough and we sit with our feelings long enough to discover the stories and the whole complex of why we are this way and why we believe what we believe and what we're doing and what we think is the answer and then letting go of that and not knowing what we're supposed to do not knowing what the answer is not knowing why we feel what we feel and as we allow ourselves to go through that unknown then we will start to understand and then the information starts to become empowering so it's no longer what do i do so that people will like me how do i get rid of my sensitivity these are things I have no control over. It started to become, okay, how can I love myself? How can I embrace my sensitivity so that I can use it in a way that's fortifying for me and others? So learning how to ask permission, learning that I am not responsible for everybody, learning how to love myself when I feel like somebody else is in a state of peril and being like, okay, we're different, right? I had to learn that their pain is not my pain and I'm not responsible for their pain and it's not my job and I'm still learning this. But these are all empowering things that I can do that don't require anyone else or anything else to change. And now I feel better in my sens sensitivity because I learned what it actually was telling me, what the pain and the pleasure were actually telling me. I was overtaking responsibility. I was telling myself terrible stories about myself that were not true about my sensitivity that were not true. And it was far more complex than I thought. When we're in this state now, in the world, where we're looking into conspiracy theories and we're doing all this stuff, wait, feel what you're really feeling. Look, investigate, what's the story? What's the story? What's the story? We're, the, the story that we don't have power and that the government is controlling us and all of these things. Okay, there are elements of that that are true, absolutely. Are there nefarious things going on out there? Absolutely. But where is your actual power? Let's sit with it for a sec. Let's be with it. Let's let ourselves grieve. Let's let ourselves feel like we're being taken advantage of. Let's let ourselves feel all this stuff without doing anything about it right now. Let's validate ourselves. What's the story? What am I telling myself? Where is the actual power? And then you're gonna to start to see that there are so many things that you can do to contribute to this new world that you want that have nothing to do with anyone else having to change. That if each one of us start to take responsibility for what we actually have control over, this whole world would be different overnight. So let's all start to be that. Where's our actual power? You know you've gotten the message from your, from your emotion. When you understand something about how reality actually functions, better. So the next time you act on your emotion, it takes you forward. It changes your circumstances. It improves your life in a permanent way. The thing you think you're going to get out of your action is the thing you actually get out of it. And it's empowered. It doesn't require anyone else or anything else to change for you to make an improvement in your life. So that's how we process. Validate the feeling. Validate what we usually do. Investigate the story. Investigate the story. What am I making this mean? Sit with it more. Go into the unknown. Allow yourself to expand, to observe things that are out of alignment with your stories. Expand into that instead of saying, no, my story is right and it has to be this. And then we go from there. Okay, so I'm going to run out of time right now. But you can watch this recording. I'm going to put it in my IDTV. Other than that, I love you. Have an amazing night. Talk to you later.